we are in Bale in eastern Uganda, one of the largest coffee growing regions in the country, to visit one of our entrepreneurs and learn how solar dryers work and how you can set up one. My name is Saluka Joffrey. My name is Steven Ekom, and together we are the founders of the Farmer's Guide Uganda Limited. When I was doing research on farming and community development on the slopes of Mount Elgon, I discovered that coffee farmers were losing their coffee to things like molding, contamination, and it was affecting the quality. We came up with different ways, taplings, having it on open beds, that was also not giving it the best. That's how solar drying was discovered. Inside the solar dryer, the color retention is maintained, the aroma is not changed, the drying is faster, the contamination is limited because a solar dryer is something which is enclosed. A solar dryer is best for cassava, coffee, cocoa, barley, including leaves like moringa. If you look at coffee, it has a recommended moisture content. If you go above that or below that, it affects the quality of your coffee. So a solar dryer makes it easy for you to achieve that faster and better. Making a solar dryer is a very simple skill and today here in this video I'm going to show you uh, how you can do this a small solar dryer at home. So step one, we are going straight to making the frame. We are going to make our dryer a little bit slanty. We want, want the water to power uh, when it rains. So the front one is going to be 1.7 uh, meters. Uh, then the behind one is going to be 1.5 meters from the ground level. You always have to leave some space about 50 centimeters. We are going to make the first, the first side of the dryer, then we do the, the right side. Then we join those two frames uh, to form the uh, standing structure. So this, this is like the upper side of the dryer. So that's why we see we're joining it slanting. First side of the frame is done. So we're going to do the same to the second, second frame. Then later we join it. You can use uh, hollow section pipes. You can also use round, uh, round section pouch. We have made our, our frames, they are the same. Now we are going to the second step, which is joining these two frames together. The difference between the two frames from, is 1.1 meters. Make sure your timber is joined well. You, you have to make sure up and down is the same. Make sure your, the timber behind here is flat. Our frame is standing. Now we can, start, we can start strengthening our dryer by putting other timber. We are going to attach the timber. That's going to help uh, strengthen the frame, but as well as hold the trays. So between the trays, there's a difference of one, one feet. Now where we marked is where we are going to put So we're going to do the same up where we measured. Now we want to take measurements of the door because this is going to be our door facing it. It is 1.10, the one we said. So even down, it should be 1.10. Yeah. So we're going to make our frame of the door. So the next step we're going to do is uh, Let's cover our frame uh, of the dryer. This is the most, most important part of the dryer. This is a material that's going to maintain the heat inside. When you're covering, make sure you don't cause any injuries on the material up so that you don't, uh, the material does not link. Then uh, another thing, this, this material comes, there's the outer side and there's the, the inner part. So it is very important for you to make sure what is supposed to be inside is inside. This material can last up to 10 years if you take care of it very well. It saves costs. Now, this is where we are going to use this 1.5 inches of nails. You fold your cavera, don't hit the nails 
don't hit the nail until it all enters. Hit and fold it. Either you fold it up, you keep changing. So we are pulling this material. We need it tight so that, first of all, it is clear enough to allow the sun rays to penetrate it because when we don't want it to form a shade. Then secondly, once when it rains, this water that falls on top of, top of this dryer just flashes and goes. So we are going to add down here. Uh, the, the vent that allows the air to enter inside and uh, we shall add it on the downer part of the trays so that even if the water splashes on the downer part because our trays are going to be one is going to be up here another one is going to be down here so this is uh, an agricultural uh, insect net and it's specifically for keeping insects out of the dryer so that insects uh, even if you leave the aerations insect cannot access your dryer so they are specifically for agricultural purposes and it is not it's different from the mosquito nets so this is what we are going to use for creating our aeration so i'm going to do the same to the other side we are done with the, our frame covering as you can see our material is tightly uh, covered I uh, want to make the drawer and attach it. We are going to cover it also with the UV. We want to achieve uh, one purpose and that is the heat. We are going to make our trays and um, we are going to use the same technique that we used for making the door to do our trays. Our trays is going to be 90 by what? 79 inches. So that's the, the, those are the sizes of our trays that are uh, well enough to fit in, inside our dryer. So now we are attaching the net, so we have to make sure it's tight. We don't want it to start lagging when we are... Air is a very big factor for drying. So that's why we use the net, because the net allows circulation. So when you put a product, at least some spaces will be left for air to circulate. We are done with our tray. So this is where you display your product when you're drying. Uh, so we have the upper layer, then we have the lower layer. And this is where you need the hygiene. When you finish drying your product, remove the other particles, the other broken particles that remain, and make sure you wash it. We are going to attach our door now. You can see, these are door hinges. Uh, this is three inch. They are big enough for this dryer. We are going to attach it up. The purpose of this is to enable us to open and close our dryer, so that when you want to load and offload your dryer, you can easily open. We are going to close down with the DPC for, for purposes of this study. But you can also use a uh, iron sheet close down to make sure uh, the, the heat down is not lost. Why black? Black is known for absorbing heat and that's why we need something that is black that can absorb heat. This is what we made. Uh, it is ready for use. This takes as big as 10 kilos of coffee or other, other products like fruits and that is per lot. If you're drying coffee, it's going to take you about two days to dry your coffee. If you're drying leaves, uh, it takes less than two hours to dry it. If you're going to dry a product, have you washed it? Have you sorted? Have you picked out the best berries? Then you go and load them on a solar dryer. If it's a fruit like a mango, wash them, slice them into good uh, slices because the smaller the, 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 the millimeter of, of a slice, the faster it will, it will dry. So the major challenge in this business is people's mindset. Some people think they really don't need a solar dryer, but they are only shocked when they go to the market and they see that their, product, their products like in coffee are being rejected or they are getting less than someone who uses a solar dryer. We are trying to sensitize communities, showing them the advantages of solar drying. Seeing a family or a household coming from earning 1 million shillings to about 10 million shillings is our pride. Because for us, our tagline is farming means business. Thank you for learning with us. As it has been demonstrated, using solar dryers contributes to sustainable energy consumption and minimizes wastage. We can't wait to see the transformation that this skill will bring in your life. Bye.